Welcome again to ETH, ETH Med. I'm Dr. Yosafit. Exit exam part three. Ms. Masalu come to gynecology of pity with a complaint of yellowish profuse vaginal discharge of four days duration and low grade fever of same days duration. You diagnose her case as bacterial vaginosis and what is the category of bacterial vaginosis? A. Sexually transmitted infection, B. Endogenous vaginal infection, C. Iatrogenic infection, B. Exogenous vaginal infection. So this, this patient already, already the occasion gives you the diagnosis. So bacteria, this is bacterial vaginosis. So the question is, what's the category of this bacterial vaginosis? So please pause your video, video and then answer the question. Let's have discussion. So bacterial vaginosis, it is not a true infection. Bacterial vaginosis is not a true infection, but rather is a is, is alteration of the concentration of normal vaginal bacteria. So normally lactobacillus, the predominant, uh, the predominant microorganisms in the vaginal epithelium is lactobacillus. So it's just this the disturbance of this lactobacillus uh, that will predispose, I mean, predispose to bacterial vaginosis. So it is just bacterial vaginosis is just imbalance between this bad and good bacteria. So the bad one, anaerobic species and facultative aerobes, uh, and it is frequently seen in postmenopausal because of low level of estrogen. So this lactobacillus is good bacteria for the vaginal epithelium. The reason for that is uh, this lactobacilli uh, will produce lactic acid and, uh, and is taught, this lactic acid is taught to protect against infection by pathogenic uh, organisms like bacteroids, fragilis, E. coli, and staphylococcus, staphylococcus aureus and other microorganisms. So the other mechanism is this, this, this lactobacilli will inhibit the growth of those uh, bacteria is through production of hydrogen peroxide, through production of uh, this hydrogen peroxide. This hydrogen peroxide is a broad, broad spectrum anti antimicrobial, which inhibit the growth of those bad bacteria. So uh, bacterial vaginosis is not sexually transmitted infection, but rather is associated with 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 sexual activity. Uh, so that the, uh, the just the sexual activity can upset the normal balance of this vaginal uh, bacteria, so that it will decrease the lactobacillus, and, uh, and at that time, the protective mechanism will reduce and this the growth of overgrowth of this. Uh, bad bacteria uh, may may predispose to bacterial vaginosis, and the most common complaint is fish odor. Fish odor and itching and burning are not present. Uh, so back to question. Back to question. So bacterial vaginosis is not STI. So is not iatrogenic. That means it's not due to me uh, like medical procedure. Uh, so it's not exogenous vaginal infection. So it is just an endogenous uh, vaginal infection. Uh, so that it's just the disturbance of normal flora. So how to diagnose vaginal bacterial vaginosis? So the diagnosis one is speculum examination. Uh, uh, actually, the 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 vaginal epithelium is acidic acidic and it is less than 4.5 it is less than 4.5 whenever there is bacteria vaginosis the vaginal ph become elevated so a positive whiff test is elicited when potassium hydroxide is placed on the discharge releasing a fishy odor whenever you apply this this uh, potassium hydroxide you got fishy odor and this is one of the uh, specular the other is there is no there is no uh, sign of inflammation in bacterial vaginosis whenever you see the with uh, speculum examination the other is wet mount wet mount 
and this there is a term called clue cell and this is normal sharp cell border obscured by increased number of anaerobic bacteria so this is very diagnostic clue cell is very diagnostic of bacterial vaginesis and this is just the the, the wbc or the white blood cells are covered by a bacteria that's the term clue cell so management of uh, bacterial vaginosis is oral or vaginal metrindazole or clindamycin and metrindazole is safe during pregnancy including first trimester so whenever you found pregnant women who are affected by bacterial vaginosis you can safely give a uh, metrindazole so this is clusel uh, this is normal this is normal epithelium and this is a clusel you see this uh, this uh, white blood cell is very covered by the uh, bacteria. So question number two. Miss Beritu is a 35 years old gravida for parasri woman is a known HIV patient for the last three years. There is chance of transmission of infection to the fetus. So what is the most possible situation that can directly affect the risk of transmission of infection from the other alternatives? A stage of HIV AIDS, B, nutritional status of the woman, C, health status of her husband, and economic status of, of the woman. So the answer, definitely, which one? A, A, the stage of HIV. So that the stage of HIV is associated with, with uh, viral, viral load, viral load, as well as uh, the uh, CD4 count. So whenever, whenever the clinical stage of the HIV is advanced, there, there is high risk of transmission of the infection from the mother to the fetus. So question number three, what Atobakala come to VCT center for HIV test while taking history, you recognize him as most at risk individual for acquiring HIV infection. Which of the following alternative could best describe the situation of this client? A, teacher, B, long distance driver, C, rich merchant, D, taxi driver. So which patient, which, which of those uh, people have higher risk to acquire HIV infection from this? So the answer is B, long distance driver. Long distance driver, uh, policeman, long distance driver, as well as commercial sex worker have high risk of acquiring HIV infection. So screening is also should be focused on those high risk uh, population. So question number four, Katama, a 24 years old college student who have been engaged in high risk behavior for the last two years and had a test for HIV test today and result come out positive. He claims that he has not engaged in any high risk behavior for the last four months after his first test. What is the catamast stage of HIV AIDS in the last four months? A, AIDS stage, B, symptomatic stage, C, asymptomatic stage, D, zero conversion stage. So the answer, so let us discuss. This patient, Atokatama, is, is diagnosed to have from the uh, from the question, you understand that this patient diagnosed to have a negative test four months back. So after four months, it become positive. So what is the stage of this uh, katama uh, uh, for within the past four months? So the stage B, AIDS, AIDS stage? No. So there is no any sign and symptom of uh, explaining AIDS stage or advanced AIDS stage. So there is no any symptom for this patient. So it's not symptomatic. So asymptomatic or seroconversion? So this is seroconversion. This is seroconversion or window period. So HIV seroconversion specifically is the time from HIV infection to in exposure to infection and to developing antibodies that can be uh, detected by a test. 
This can take a few weeks and is sometimes called window period. So this window period is at the time whenever a patient is a person is infected with HIV, and then uh, it is until that the patient develop antibody for the for the virus, and this is called zero conversion time or window period. By that time, you can detect the uh, the HIV AIDS through your test. Uh, uh, to detect the antibody. So this is zero conversion time. So question number five, whether Yeshima with a 32 years old, gravid have four para two women come to clinic with heavy bleeding through vagina. On physical examination, uterus is 20 week. It is her second time since the last two years. She was trying to conceive. On history, she, she was well until the last day. She was, she was feeling lower abdominal cramp suddenly without Identify reason, identifiable reason. Doctor diagnosed this as abortion 20 to cervical incompetence. So what could be the classification of abortion of this woman by onset? A, inevitable abortion. B, spontaneous abortion. C, missed abortion. D, induced abortion. So this question, this question is asking the classification of abortion. So let us go to discussion. So abortion is defined as ex expulsion of product of conception before gestational age of viability. So age of age of viability is uh, different in some country, like it is less than 20 week in UK and Ethiopia. And also it is less than 20, 20 week or less than 500 gram in US as well as HO, uh, WHO is also defined, they use this uh, uh, 20, 20 weeks as age of uh, gestational age of viability. So, classification of abortion like unsafe abortion, and so also there is therapeutic abortion. So, Zazar, look at this classification. Clinically, um, uh, abortion can be classified as threatened, inevitable, incomplete, complete, as well as missed, based on gestational age, early, if it is less than 12 weeks. Late, if it is greater than 12 weeks. Recurrent, three or more consecutive uh, uh, abortion, which is spontaneous. Uh, based on site, you can classify uh, uh, abortion safe or unsafe, or it, based on etiology, spontaneous or induced. Induced may be therapeutic or, or legal or criminal or illegal. Association with infection, septic or aseptic. So this all is uh, uh, classification of uh, abortion. So let's uh, go to our uh, our question. So inevitable. To mean inevitable, the abortion, uh, the abortion uh, that should have to tell the we should have to see the cervix. The cervix become dilated. The cervix become dilated one. And also, uh, uh, the the product of concepts is not uh, passed. So, inevitable to to say inevitable abortion, there is a vaginal bleeding. This, and also the cervix is dilated. And also the membrane is 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 ruptured. The membrane is ruptured, but the product of conception is not passed. This is not this is inevitable abortion. So, in the occasion, there is no any explanation about the cervix and nothing tell about inevitable so the classification is not clinical <laughs> the other is b spontaneous abortion so this is the answer because it is telling us that it is without any identifiable identifiable reason and this is this is called spontaneous abortion induced if you induce the pregnancy if the uh, sorry if you induced the abortion uh, whenever, for example, if you have, you can induce uh, the the abortion if if there is a maternal reason, like like for example, if the patient have a cardiac problem and like for example, cardiac problem like severe mitral stenosis or severe MS, if this pregnancy will continue and if it if this this uh, will uh, will will predispose the woman 
to danger, you can induce the pregnancy, I mean, the abortion. The other reason to, to induce abortion uh, medically is that uh, uh, with, with fetal reasons, like if the fetus have uh, severe congenital malformation, and if this, if you think this, this uh, congenital anomaly is incompatible with life, you can induce you know, uh, abortion. So, uh, so this is not induced. It is without an identified reason, and this is spontaneous abortion, missed abortion. So this is a type of abortion. Uh, the fetus or the 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 the, the embryo is died, and the product of contraception is is is, is uh, the pregnancy or the died fetus is in the uterus. It's not passed. Uh, this is called missed abortion. So this variety of abortion, like threatened abortion, in threatened abortion, uh, the cervix is, uh, is not dilated in, the cervix is closed. So to say threatened abortion, there is a vaginal bleeding, uh, commonly very minimal vaginal bleeding with minimal like uterine um, uh, or abdominal uh, cramp. And also the, the cervix is, is closed. The cervix is closed in threatened abortion. It is closed. So this, by the way, this threatened abortion, uh, the fetus is alive. In, in, in fetal, uh, I mean, in ultrasound, you may hear uh, fetal heart rate is positive. The report may come with fetal heart rate positive. So the chance of survival is high, even if it has uh, the risk of this. So the other is inevitable abortion. As we discussed it, the cervix is dilated and membrane is ruptured. So thank you. Please subscribe and follow uh, our channel to get more video. And thank you. Uh,